Dr. Tabitha, the functional gynecologist. I'm a board certified OBGYN and functional medicine physician. I've embraced the world of functional medicine and wellness through my own personal health journey, and I'm super excited to share my wisdom and unique perspective as it pertains to women's health. So if you're struggling with hormone imbalance, weight gain, period issues, anxiety, insomnia, you name it, then you've come to the right place. I want to be your functional gynecologist. So welcome. So I'm super excited for this week's episode. I interviewed Chris Rice. She provides soul care for mamas raising kids with mental health challenges. She says, imagine creating freedom, clarity, and ease in your life, even amidst the chaos. That's where she comes in. So I just love everything she's doing. And like we talk about in the episode today, I don't think this is just for moms of children who have mental health challenges. I think this is for all moms. Like we all need this because honestly, we're all going through so much, especially with this pandemic, right? That seems to now be lingering on and maybe coming back with a vengeance. Um, So I really just think that we need to take care of ourselves. We need permission to make ourselves a priority. We need support from other women to know that we're all in this together and we can navigate this life and actually enjoy our life. We don't have to live stressed out and pulling our hair out and miserable and feeling hopeless. Like if if that is you right now, I really want you to listen to this episode. And if you know any women who are struggling, I want you to share this episode with them because we all need hope. I mean, as soon as you lose hope on stuff, that's when you're really screwed, honestly. So don't lose hope. There's always you know, the sunshine after the dark, there's always a new promise of a new day. And Chris is going to share like some of her quick win tools that she uses to pull herself and her clients out of dark times where they're feeling hopeless and frustrated and and bring that sense of calm back into their life and feel like you're in control again and you have freedom from all of the crap that's going on around you. Like that stuff should not control your life and your existence. You should be in control of how your day plays out. And I just love this conversation that we had today. So please stick, you know, stay tuned and listen because it's really good figure out like what can I take away from this episode what hit home for me what did I connect with and then what can I go and try and change and do differently tomorrow to maybe have a different outcome and Chris is doing an amazing um, unstuck group program it's like 30 days to getting unstuck in your life and so it's like quick wins figuring out how to reset how to do things differently so I'm really excited about all the work she's doing so I know you'll love this episode the way I did it was really good talking to her so here we go well welcome Chris to the functional gynecologist podcast thank you I'm so glad to be here today Yeah, I'm really excited to have this conversation because I know there's a ton of mamas out there who are feeling overwhelmed. You and I were just talking before we started recording about how COVID is just like takes over your life and throws everything on its head and then you just got to like scramble and figure it out. So I'm excited for you to like help us with all of this. (laughs) (laughs) We're all in it together, right? (laughs) Yes. Oh my goodness. That's the key, isn't it? Like you don't have to go any of this alone. Right. I know, but it can feel very lonely. I'm very aware of that too. So yes. Yes. I'm so happy for this time to connect today. It's so nice. So, so you created this whole 
um, Chris Rice Collective, like your mission is just to connect women, help women, lift them up and give them tools to navigate, you know, raising children with challenges and all of that, right? Yeah, because like we were saying, I mean, it can feel isolating and it can feel alone. And I know, like for my personal motherhood journey, it really shaped what I've built because it really is like the support that I needed along the way that I didn't know existed or the tools and resources that I didn't know were there. And so I've what I've really built is from my heart and soul, really just trying to support other moms who are in this space where, you know, life didn't look how you pictured it. You had this beautiful picture of motherhood and it just it, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's imperfect and messy and different than we envisioned it. And so that's the life that I've led and kind of figuring out, okay, I have a choice. I can dig in and be okay with this messy space, but what does that look like and how can that be? Or I can cling to like what I thought it should look like. So um, what I have built is really, I dug into being okay in the mess and you know how can we feel better in that because that can be a real struggle there's a lot of resources for the person who has the mental health struggles or whatever challenge they have presented with them but sometimes as the caregiver and the mom there's a lack or there's a disconnect there and it can feed that loneliness and that feeling of helplessness and hopelessness yeah so tell me how you got into all of this. Why are you even doing this? <laughs> I know being that I came from like corporate marketing and events, <laughs> <laughs> an odd choice. <laughs> yeah. um, I think uh, one, I always had an entrepreneurial spirit to me. I think it's just part of who I am. It definitely comes in my family. So I had that, but I didn't know what it should look like or what I wanted that to look like. And in all honesty and transparency, really, my journey with discovering that my daughter had mental health challenges at three shaped that. Like it opened my eyes to, I always had a heart for serving other people, I think. I definitely had that, but I didn't know how that could look. And as I just learned ways to support myself, I realized that there was more I could do. And I had the ability to transform other people's lives and being able to meet them where they are, give them these resources so that it doesn't have to take someone else 10 years to figure out all these things that work. Like I did the work. I'm happy to hand it over and give you a fast track to it. So it took me a winding path for sure to figure out how I could be of service. But I think that I've really landed in that sweet spot for what I have to provide to other people. Oh my gosh. I love that. You have such a huge heart. So that's thank wonderful. you. Yeah. Thank you. You created this, you know, realizing you had issues and needs with having a child with mental health challenges. But, you know, when I read everything you're doing, I feel like every woman would benefit from the tools that you're providing because we all are, you know, juggling and struggling and trying yeah. to just make it work. And then you go and add that extra layer of having a child who needs extra time and support and everything, but these tools I feel like are for every woman, are they not? I, you know, it's funny you say that because I've been hearing that more and more lately. Like in my head, I keep thinking I'm talking to like the twin version of me, right? Like I'm talking to her 10 years ago, but I don't disagree at all. I think while I say this is for the mom who has these specific challenges in front of her, it is for every mom because truly now more than ever with how much is put on our plates, the fact that we're even trying to give back to ourselves can go beyond the bottom of the list, right? And I think that giving ourselves that permission and ability to put ourselves back up on that list is such a foundation for what I have built for myself to really feel better on a daily basis. And I think there's a lot of disconnect and like not knowing where to start. You know, people talk about self-care all the time, but you're like, great, I can't actually do that in real daily life. Like what can I do that, you know, I can do on my drive to go pick up my kids from school and I can feel better by the time I get there. Like what can I take on the go to do? And so um, 
I agree. I think all of us need to be able to have that free sense of permission to really give back to ourselves because we've got to release that sense that it's, or that idea that it's remotely selfish because it's just not. Yes. So we're going to get into all that because I want my listeners to have some golden nuggets by the end of this episode of like things they can start to incorporate. So tell me the typical woman that you envisioned, you know, helping, like what are the struggles that women are going through that are going to be helped with this? I feel like it's someone who, again, has that sense of really like the weight on their shoulders. They're trying to hold all this up. They're trying to hold up their family and keep all the balls in the air, but things are falling and probably their own pieces are falling. And people, even in their, in their immediate family may not see or notice that. So it only keeps festering that sense of darkness and burden and heaviness in your daily life. And I think it's very easy to sink into that and kind of like be looking up underwater, right? Not have that feeling of how to float back to the top. And so um, I think that's the person that I'm trying to reach is like, they know that there could be a better way, there could be a different way, but they just don't know what that is. And so I can help provide those simple, but super effective resources, types of support to be able to really bridge that gap and bring them back up above water. Yeah. And I, I was surprised at myself this morning because I feel like I have tools to navigate and get through things and I'm no longer underwater. I can finally Mm -hmm. breathe. And, you know, I feel like I've done the self-care thing for a few years and I feel like I'm no longer drowning, but this morning, you know, my daughter was just diagnosed with COVID two days ago, and we are like in the midst of trying to figure out schooling from home with three kids and me working full time virtually. I had a flashback to last year when I was home for six weeks, and it was hell, you know, and yes. all of a sudden I went back into that place and I ripped my husband's head off and I had a little meltdown and I thought, mm-hmm oh my gosh, I'm sure there's other women who are still going through this. And it's like, we've done the work and we've come so far, but you still have those moments. And so we need tools to be able to pull us out. Luckily, I knew what I needed to do to get out of that situation. But like last year, I struggled. I didn't pull Mm -hmm. out so quickly and so easily. And it's, it's a slippery slope down into the dark place. So I love that you are someone that they can reach out to and say, okay, we need to work together. We need to like figure out how I can pull myself out of this so that I'm not drowning anymore. So, you know, I'm just being vulnerable here. It was a rough morning. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) as soon as you feel like you got it together, you still need help and resources, right? Oh my gosh. So true. I mean, that hits home. You have no idea. I was in tears 30 minutes before we met here today oh to make me goodness. feel better. Yes. I literally, and you know, part of me was like, should we still connect? Can I be my best self to really serve and support people today? And then part of me was like, you know what, this is real. And this is what life actually looks like. And so as hard as it is, like, we have to be okay in those uncomfortable spaces and know that we're going to make it through it too. Like, I was throwing every tool I had at myself and my kids. And you know what? It wasn't working. (laughs) It was not working, but we did our best. And that's kind of what I kept coming back to is like, you know what? I've got these tools, but all of us are a work in progress on this. And it couldn't and shouldn't be perfect. Like people in the carpool line saw me walking away bawling. People were bringing me Kleenex. Like, but that's also where what I took away from it was like, I actually got hugs from people that I don't usually get hugs from. Like you feel seen and heard in a really deep way. And I think especially now that goes such a long ways, like to actually have somebody be willing to do that is a big deal. And so um, I'm here to say I'm not perfect either, but I have a lot of ways to support myself and support other people. And so don't think I'm perfect because it's for sure not the case. (laughs) None of us are. I mean, Jesus is a perfect person. And you you hit on such an important point. Like you 
felt like a mess and you were ready to cancel because you didn't feel like you could show up, but you showed up. And that's, I had the same exact thought, like, oh my gosh, I can't handle this right now. I got so much going on. And I realized, yes, you can, because when you show up and you provide service to others and you get out of that comfort zone, that pushes you to be better. And it gets you out of that negative, like stewing, you know, deprivation, situation like you have to pull yourself out of it no matter how uncomfortable so I'm so glad we both made the right choice and showed up we did see (laughs) and that's what women need to do they just need to do the hard thing they need to show up they need to put themselves first even when life is falling apart literally you know I'm like here's your zoom call here's your homework here's your lunch I gotta go take care of me (laughs) You know, I'll That's see you in an hour. Yes. 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 I, uh, my new one that I literally might say to myself 50 times a day right now is just the next right thing. So, what is literally the next right thing that I can do? Because it can get so easy to be like, okay, well, I have to have a solution for this, but it takes 400 things to get there. And I'm like, nope. The next right thing is to do get a glass of water to go, you know, walk around the block, whatever it is. And usually the next right thing is a really tiny thing, which then just kind of like pulls you out of that funk, I think too. Perfect. So yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Like when women are just feeling like they have nothing left to give, they can't take care of their kids anymore. They can't Mm -hmm. handle this stuff. What do they do? So I am a big fan of stepping back to be with myself in those times, um, as like counterintuitive as that sounds, um, that took me a long time to learn, but I know that I, I can't think or feel really when I'm in the midst of all the chaos of it. So for me, like it usually is me pulling back and going sitting by myself for like 10 minutes. And it honestly isn't very fun. Like it usually isn't a good feeling in the beginning, but when I can kind of just allow myself to sink below the surface of it, like all the chaos at the surface, then the the clarity is all under there. And I think that is like our superpower as a mom is that clarity. And it lives in all of us, even if we don't feel connected to it, but it's finding ways to connect to that because I mean, I'm gonna, I was gonna say hundred percent, probably not hundred percent, but usually like 99% of the time, that answer is under there. And it's usually not as complicated as your thinking mind will make it. And so if you can just sink into that space and be okay with letting whatever comes up, come up, I really believe that's where so much of our next right thing just comes right to us. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And it's like, for me, 10 minutes of some Christian music, you know, that Mm -hmm. will be enough to like pull me out, reset me. Singing will physically pull you out of that sympathetic, horrible state because you're stimulating your vagus nerve, you know, Mm -hmm. the calm comes in and the anxiety goes away. So Mm -hmm. what are your favorite go-tos to like, just take time for you and fill your own cup back up? Um, I love, so I'm a huge fan of tapping. So I will literally go do, um, When I'm stuck in something, I like it to be guided because then I don't have to like think about it as much. So I will go to like YouTube and find a five minute tapping on whatever I'm struggling with at that point. That is a huge help for me. Um, There's times when I'm literally sitting in my office and it all feels like it's too much. And we're a big fan, my whole family of like the five senses grounding. So just, you know, seeing what you see, hearing what you hear and going through your five senses. And it's astounding to me how quickly that can just like land you right back in the present moment. So um, I would say tapping and the grounding are like the two to really like jumpstart me quick and pull me out of it. So I can at least like take another step forward. I love that. So what's a, what's the best way to start teaching your kids how to do grounding? You know, it's so interesting. A a lot of it, a lot of the practices that I came across, like I thought they were just for me or for an adult or things like that. And it, what has been so eye-opening to me is how beneficial 
those practices are to kids. And usually you don't have to modify it too much to make that doable for them. So um, yeah, we do that with both my kids. If they start to spin and they're overwhelmed, we'll just stop and like sit on their bed. And then literally uh, this as silly and simple as the practice sounds, it's just finding five things that you can see, four things that you can hear, three things that you can feel, two things you can smell and one that you can taste. And in all honesty, we like rarely remember the numbers. We just mix it up to whatever it is and whatever we can do. But the more granular you can get and be like, okay, I see a plant. Well, what color is the plant? What texture is the plant? Like the more you can get into that, it will just literally slam your feet down into the present moment. And so um, I would say that as well as um, just really simple breath work. Both of those seem to have been very simple for my kids to just pick up. And the beauty is you can do them anywhere, which I love because it's like, well, great. If you're having this moment of complete panic at home, like it's one thing if you have all these tools and things around you, but what if you're out in public and you're like, okay, I just need to like pull aside. We'll do this real quick and then we'll come right back in. So um, I love things like that that are like, not that it is, there's any judgment if people see you or know that you're doing something, but I think for kids, that's a really safe space to know I'm doing something to support my body and feel better, but other people don't even need to know that it's anything different than like what they see at the surface that tends to like really hit home for my kids. Yeah, exactly. I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So it's like, we're not only trying to teach them how to be less anxious overall with life, but to have some coping skills in the moment. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I just truly believe we need to model that. And so many of us are running around like chicken with our heads cut off. We're just like, yeah, as soon as we wake up, we're go, go, go till we fall asleep. And we don't process, we, we don't mm-hmm. do anything really. We're just like, do, do, do. And we're teaching our kids to be that way. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, and it's so true. I mean, I can't remember who said it. I heard one time that, um, um, you know, obviously that will, you'll pick up on that really fast, but so is calm. So as soon as you can bring that into your home and you can show that in a really authentic way, it is contagious. Like it, it absolutely catches on. So um, I think it it's amazing how much our kids, now I have very empathetic kids. So I might have like an extreme version of this, but you know, kids really pick up on the energy that you're bringing into a situation. And so again, it's not selfish to make yourself feel better because all you're doing is shifting how your whole the whole like energy field of your house is really different when you bring yourself from a calm space versus that chicken with your head cut off, which can be really the default unless you try otherwise. Yeah. I mean, talk about that more because I feel like women don't realize they do run the house, even, (laughs) you know, if they're not necessarily making the financial decisions or whatever, like how you act and behave and what you do, you're influencing what your husband or your partner does Mm -hmm. and what your children do and what your friends do. I mean, we have so much more influence than we admit or understand. Don't you agree? I completely agree. I always picture it like a pyramid and we're like at the very top of the pyramid and you don't realize how much that trickles down to everybody else who is within your little, your little pyramid of a family, friend, community network, like it's really astounding. And I think the thing that I think is so incredible in that is that you don't always have to have like an uncomfortable conversation, like say with your spouse or something that like, okay, I want to start meditating. Here's what that's going to look like. Here's what I want to do. And almost like asking for that permission piece. If you just feel really solid in what you need, whatever that is, if you're solid in that, it you'd be astounded by how the people around you really respond to that and get on board with it. And I think so many times we overthink it and it doesn't have to be anything that big. It's as simple as deciding I need this for me. This I know will support me. And you know what? Chances are it's going to end up having a, an effect on everybody else around me. Um, and I can say that for every like healthy habit that I've picked up, it astounds me that like, I won't even talk about it and maybe I'll get all spun up about something. 
And my daughters would be like, you might want to go meditate for a little bit and come back. (laughs) And like, we don't even talk about it that much, but they pick up on those things that they're like, okay, mom feels better. She shows up different if she does this. And the thing that I love so much about that is that also gives them freedom to really figure out what works for them too. like have ownership over that and realize this makes my body feel good. This doesn't ditch that. And you know what, how do I do more of this? And so I think we really do have such an influence over, over all the people that are within our, our little bubble. And there's a lot of good that you can do. By just, so if that encourages you to like, take that leap and give yourself that permission, do it. Because if you can't do it, first do it for yourself, but also, you know, you are going to have such a bigger impact than you even realize. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> you know, we're talking about some easy, basic things to implement, yeah. but life can get challenging, right? Especially yeah. with, you know, having children who have mental health challenges or physical challenges, you know, mm-hmm. like what's been the most challenging part for you and how are you handling these things? I think that's a great question. I think the biggest challenge for me is always the unknowns. I always want to have answers to things. I always want to know who to go to for supporting my daughter or who can help me feel better. I always want to have those answers, but having acceptance that there's a lot of unknowns, I mean, my goodness, in the last year and a half, (laughs) has that not been more (laughs) relevant than ever? But somehow it's always still my lesson I go back to because it's still not something I love. It's not something that I really embrace, but it continues to be that thing that it's okay. I'm not going to die in the unknown. It might feel like it in the moment, but if I can sit there and I can be okay, I can feel my feelings and I can kind of get out of that logical mind, then miraculously those answers come. I mean, it just is really astounding to me that like, take that weight off. You don't always have to have all the answers. Like if you really do just kind of relinquish that control, then a lot of times it will just present itself. So I think just being okay, if nothing else, like maybe you don't even embrace the unknown, but you are okay and know that it's going to pass, then that can be a really powerful space. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's so many times when we don't know how things are going to mm-hmm. turn out. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's just been the story of my life the past couple of years. And mm-hmm. you have to have faith that God's got you or the universe has got you. Like things mm-hmm. are going to work out and you just have to stop forcing it, you know, stop like yes. beating it to death yes. and handling it and just <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we are in our own way, almost like you're saying hundred percent calm that mind down to let that energy flow through so that Mm -hmm. the solution can present itself. I love that. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, it to like put a little bow on it and put an example to it. Cause I always like stories to like put it at home. But, um, when we kind of first started my journey with my daughter of being like, life shouldn't be this hard. Like what is going on? Why? I don't feel like other parents are maybe having this experience with a three-year-old. This just seems like a lot. Um, But asking that, like putting that out there to be like, I don't have an answer for my own child is really hard. Like that is very difficult to say, I know something's wrong, but I don't know how to help her. And I don't know how to help us as a family. But as soon as I did, and we acknowledged like, this is really tough. Like you, like my husband and I were sitting in chairs next to each other. Like, this is really hard, right? Like, I think this is more than we expected it to be. Like, how could we support her better? But we had to take the leap of faith to say, I don't know who to reach out to. I don't know what's going on in her sweet little brain, but I think she needs more than we're giving her right now. And as soon as we did that, we were presenting what presented with an opportunity to align with a, um, like a play therapist, an occupational therapist for children. And I had never heard of it. I had no idea what that was, how they could support her. But lo and behold, that wonderful person was brought into our laps. And then we were, uh, we went to her office for 
four or five years. So you just don't know what could, we don't, we like to think we know, <laughs> but we don't always know what those solutions should be. So um, kind of having that sense of surrender to knowing what the answer or the outcome should be, I think is really powerful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that story. I completely believe that and you just have to ask the universe. You just have mm -hmm. to sit with yourself, figure out what you need and just present it to the universe. Yeah. Like just ask yeah. for it, just write it down, just say it out mm -hmm. loud, say it to someone mm -hmm. else. And yes, all of a sudden things start coming. Things start yeah. changing. I see it all of the time. You know, I did the same thing when I had to shift to a virtual, the wellness that I worked at closed. I was like, dear Lord, help me figure this out. You know, this is what I need. Mm -hmm. And it all presented itself. And I feel yeah. like when we're, tr we're getting in our own way and we're trying to like figure it out and manhandle it, it just doesn't happen because it doesn't, we're not seeing the clues because things mm -hmm. are sometimes subtle, right? Yes. Yes. So yeah. true. Yeah. So true. Oh, goodness. So <laughs> If you could go back and do things differently, what would you do differently? Or would you just be, do this journey the way you have? That's a great question. For myself, I think there were so many lessons in it that I needed to go through that I wouldn't do it any differently. Um, and I think, you know, if I look back to like what I thought motherhood would be and that like beautiful curated version of it, it just, it doesn't even hold a candle to what we have now. Like we as a family are so much more authentic and ourselves. And like, yes, there's a lot of challenges that are presented to us. I mean, could I have done without an hour and a half of crying this morning? Yes. But overall, like I would, I wouldn't do it differently. I'm, I'm thankful for those lessons that I had. And I'm thankful for giving myself that permission to say like, something's something needs work here and like seeing where that all led to oh my gosh I love that so <laughs> if somebody is listening today which I know they are and they're feeling like yeah I'm just I'm at my breaking point I can't do this on my own anymore what is it like when they reach out to you what does that whole process look like of working with you yeah well I I think it's so important to pay attention and listen to that little nag in your brain, right? Like that little thing of like, oh, like maybe I should think about this. Like maybe I should just see what that would look like. So I would say that is a huge thing to me is like, if you have that little desire, that little question in your mind, there's nothing, please jump on a call with me for 15 minutes. I would love to connect and like hear what's going on with you and see if we're a right fit for each other. Um, because I have a lot of different ways that I support people. I have a really incredible membership program. So it's a holistic health coaching membership. And so we have weekly calls. We have weekly support calls along the way so that you feel really supported along the way. And then I bring in incredible experts. Um, it would be super fun to have you on there. For the record. <laughs> I would love that. Um, <laughs> so, um, I bring in different wellness experts that have really supported me across my journey. So you can learn more from that and like broaden your toolkit, but have a bunch of other resources that maybe you didn't know about before, but could really support you. So that's what the membership looks like. And then I also have a program that I'm just so excited about. It's called Unstuck and it's a really fast track to what I've kind of been alluding to this 10 year journey of finding and exploring different ways to support me and support myself as a mom to feeling better, to really having more freedom and clarity and calm in my life, even though there's a whole lot of chaos going on. Um, so I'm really excited. This is going to launch in September and I'm just so thrilled to be bringing this to the world. It feels like it's my heart and soul and a little program to hand over to people. <laughs> I love that. And is this a, an ongoing program people can join or is it you have to sign up by a certain time? 
And I'm going to do, so um, I'm going to do a live masterclass. And so you can kind of learn more about it, learn more about my story. I'll share some um, really great ways to support yourself as a mom and feeling more grounded in that. And then um, that'll lead into the program being open and it will be open. So please come check it out. Um, if you aren't able to join live for the masterclass, that'll be on September 21st. So I don't know if um, this will have aired by then, but if not, I'll for sure have the recording up so you don't have to miss it. That's so awesome. Okay. Thank you. I think community is key, like getting in a group program with like women who are going through what you're going through makes the journey so much easier and successful because you have someone that knows what you're going through and they're going through it and you can support each other and hold each other accountable and give each other tips and, you know, like you don't have to be strong and perfect all the way through, right? So no, you, not not at all. At, who can just like connect and relate? And so often, what I see with my patients is their friends don't understand or their spouse doesn't understand. And so, if you're in a group of like-minded women going through the same struggles, it's super powerful, right? Well, and how fast can you create change because of that? Because you're no longer in your own little, your own little bubble of support. Like think of having all those women who are in your same shoes, really coming together and supporting you and that you completely nailed it because that sense of community before COVID even happened was really my vision for what I wanted to build. I wanted it to be like a group of women who just lift each other up. We, we support each other. And like I said, I don't have the answers, but I love the idea of like people taking my ideas and taking those and applying them to their own life. So, you know, one person may take it this direction, the other takes it another, but you can share that and learn from each other. And I just, I see it flourishing and blooming and having this really supportive community for people and moms who just need it so much. Yeah, exactly. I love that. And when women try to do stuff on their own, I hear this all the time, like, oh, I tried that. It didn't work. And what's Mm -hmm. really happening is I don't think we're trying it long enough. We're not consistent enough or we're, we're not doing it in a way that makes sense. So I just think Mm -hmm. to have someone like you who is an expert in these tools and can explain how to use it and troubleshoot, Mm -hmm. that is where the magic happens because so often it's a practice. It's not like you tapping once and it fixes you and you figure it out, right? (laughs) Totally, totally. And that's why I envision this, you know, this fast track 30 day program is, is that it's to like level set, get yourself really well supported in a short amount of time. So you do feel change in that short amount of time, because we all need that. And that is my intention behind it. Then I love, you know, the membership and sort of that alumni program piece of it is that ongoing nurturing of coming together, having weekly times where we see each other like this and and to be able to come together and have that community i think you know that you'll have you'll absolutely have change in those 30 days there's no question but really it is a practice and it is a learning and a continued aspect to my life for sure and um i know there's a lot of people who are like minded in that oh that's awesome okay so <laughs> where do we sign up for your master class Yeah, if you want to, um, I will send you the link for your show notes. But if you want to head to Chris Bryce Collective, it's Chris with a K, chrisbricecollective.com, there will be a pop up for it. So you can sign up there, or there'll be a link to unstuck is the name of the program. And so you'll be able to link through and sign up from there. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely have those in my show notes. That's awesome. Awesome. Literally everybody listening should go watch it. It's a free webinar, right? And just learn more information right. about the program. You know, mm-hmm. if you can gain some freedom, some clarity, some calm, like that's what we all need. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? That's just, <laughs> that, that is the key to a better day. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Anything else you want to tell my listeners? I would love to tell them that don't lose hope. 
I've had a lot of moments in there where hope seems dim and it definitely can come and go, um, but cling to that. There is always change that can be had, trust that there can be change and just don't lose sight of that hope. It is, um, it's there for a reason and I promise it is always there even if it seems a little bit dim. Oh my gosh. Yes. So true. So true. So yes, check out the show notes, go sign up for this masterclass. Let's get you going so that we can see if unstuck is right for you or get on a coaching call. If you need more one-on-one like Chris is here for you ladies. (laughs) I am here for you. Um, for sure. Feel free to put the, um, the link to the free coaching call in the notes as well. I would love to connect. Um, And there's a link for that on my site too, of course, but um, I would love to connect. It's always nice to see people face to face. Cool. Well, thank you so much. This has been awesome. I hope, you know, I hope you got into the ears of somebody. Thank you. It was an honor to be here. I truly appreciate the time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. So my golden nugget for today was the sitting and becoming aware of your senses. I think that is a great tool to pull you out of some crazy overwhelming moments where you're just feeling like you can't even handle it, right? We've all been there, we know what I'm talking about. But if you just stop, even you or with your kids or your you know, significant other and say, what are five things I see? What are four things I feel? What are three things I hear? You know, and go down the line of your five senses and pull you back into the present moment to get you out of your head of the chaos that's going on and the overwhelm of whatever that situation was. That is powerful. I know I personally do more, um, like a different version of this at the end of the day. So I'll lay in bed when I'm ready to fall asleep and I will do a body scan and I will see what I'm trying to feel and I will acknowledge those feelings and whether they're painful or pleasant and whether they heighten or go away. And when you start to get in tune with the world around you and with how your body's feeling, you can shift what's going on in your brain and that then shifts what's going on in your body. So, I mean, the connection is real, it's direct and it can be quick. So I love the idea of just taking yourself out of that moment and then getting really present. Like, what am I seeing right now? What am I hearing? What am I smelling? What am I tasting and seeing? And get out of that craziness. So that was my golden nugget for today. I really liked that. And I'm going to use that on my kids, especially my 10 year old, because I think they're still impressionable enough that they'll go along with it. You might have to get a little bit more creative if your kids are a little bit older. Um, But it's always worth a try to teach our kids new tools, right? Like the more we can help them navigate through this crazy life, the better off they'll be. You know, I've been sitting here stressing, worrying about schoolwork and is my kid gonna learn enough and this and that because he's missing it from being home with COVID, blah, blah, blah. But that, those are not what he really needs to learn in life. What he needs to learn is how to manage the skills and the coping mechanisms of being sheltered and being stuck at home and not, you know, hanging out with his friends and going to school. Like, how do you navigate that? That is where the real gold is. That's where the magic is for him to be a successful human being in this life. So it's all a matter of perspective. So I hope you got something out of this episode. Let me know. DM me, you know, on Instagram at Dr. Tabitha, T-A-B-A-T-H-A, no eyes. Shoot me your questions. You can check out my website, drtabitha.com. Email me. And I'm sure you've heard me say this before. I work with women all over the world. So if you want to have a virtual conversation and get some help with your gut, your hormones, your emotions, your weight, like anything that you're struggling with, your thyroid, all of it, we can do all of that. So 
I love working with women everywhere. It's like, that's what I, it's my passion. So don't hesitate to reach out with to me and we can get you going and make you be the amazing woman that I know you were created to be. I know you're capable of being. We just have to figure out what kind of support you need. So go out and have a kick-ass week, ladies. Bye.